Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. We're going to continue talking about species of reptiles that may supplant the ball python that would have a chance. Well, the other one that got mentioned in the comments on our uh, reptile market is a boom or bust video was the hognose. Now, I really like these guys. Okay, these are a really cool snake. It's one I've never gotten into personally, but I'm kind of a fan of. There's some really pretty ones out there. They have some cool little traits and tricks they do. Uh, so let's talk about this animal and what it has that it could put it over ball pythons or make it cut out that market and what it's missing. Again, I don't think, spoiler alert, this is not going to replace ball pythons. I'll explain why. Do I think this snake, similar to like the blood python, could carve out a niche? Absolutely. Uh, that niche though, uh, is it bigger than the blood python niche? I think it could be. You know, without digging through a bunch of the legality issues, which we'll talk about, I think this, this is one snake that could have a really massive following and does have a pretty good following. There's some people that love their hoggies. So what does the hog nose bring to the table? Well, the ball pythons, we frequently talk about the size of them as being part of why they're just so hard to replace, right? They're that perfect size snake. Well, hog nose, they're small. These things are going to be under three feet typically, you know. Uh, so it's not uncommon to have adults that are going to be you know, 25 to 34 inches. So they're going to be a small snake. Their weight is going to be about a pound. So that's a lot smaller than a, than a ball python. I still believe that people, when they want a snake uh, for their first snake, frequently want something with a little bit of size. You know, it's, it's that old uh, redneck guy. Well, look at my snake. I'm trying to impress people, right? And the hog nose is not going to do that. It's not going to, nobody's going to look at the hog nose that's not a reptile person and be like, whoa, that's an impressive thing, or, oh, I'm holding this snake that's kind of big and has a little bit of a feel of danger to it, even though you and I both know there is absolutely no danger to holding a ball python at all. You know, it's just not that, not that kind of snake at all. So I think the size is a double-edged sword for these guys. I think it's going to kind of hurt it because it doesn't have that, it's just not quite big enough to be impressive, where the ball python is big enough to be impressive to non-snake people or non-reptile people. And that is play a role. However, some people want small. Some people look at the ball python and think it's still too big. Enter the hog nose. This is where like hog nose and corn snakes have an advantage. Corn snakes being just as long as ball pythons, a little bit longer, but they stay small and skinny, so they're pretty light. These guys, under three feet, one pound. The cool thing with these is since they're so much shorter on average than a ball python, their body doesn't look overly skinny. Their body proportions look pretty good, right? Uh, they don't look, I don't really like snakes personally that are super thin. I don't want a super thin snake. I tend to like medium body snakes. And the hog nose is kind of there because it's so short. Even though it's light, it's kind of medium bodied. So they're, they're kind of cool for that aspect. It's one of the reasons I kind of like them. Most small snakes don't fit that mold. I'm not a guy who's into racers or really into, you know, some of the, some of the ones that are just thinner bodies. It's just not my jam, right? Uh, think about what we keep here. I keep a lot of ball pythons, medium bodied. I do keep some carpets and carpets kind of walk that line, right? Your carpet shouldn't be too big around. Uh, Westerns are a pretty medium bodied snake. It's just kind of the look I like. So hognose would fit that. Now, uh, how many colors and morphs do we have? Well, again, we went on Morph Market just to see what's there. This does not say that this is everything. But if you look up traits on Morph Market, they're doing a little better than the Bloods. They've got 39 varieties right now, right? And out of curiosity, I said, well, how many ball python varieties are there on Morph Market? Well, there's uh, 226. So you can see the difference here. And even though we could probably really do this and write 150 because how much shit out there is just a repeat, you're still vastly different amount of paints, right? Um, and so that is an issue. Like, this is where ball pythons just, they're so hard to beat, man. And if there's 39 on Morph Market, the average show is going to, because the average show doesn't have 150 of these, right? They may have like 75, 80. Well, that would knock this down if it's the same thing to about 20. So there's going to be a lot more. And you may say, well, 40 to 150, that's not that big of a difference. It's only about 110. But you've got to remember, when you start to combo this stuff up, right, the, the difference, the exponential differences you have of varieties here is just vastly greater mathematically than the varieties here. So again, varieties are going to just keep that ball python up there for a long time. But 39 is not bad. And there's some really cool ones. You have your condos and your super condos, uh, you know, some which, they're, they're neat. So there's some really cool of these. Now, 
Now let's talk about personality. Something we didn't really talk about with the blood python. We did a little bit because we talked about how they have a reputation of being jerks, even though it's really not true. This is a spot where hog nose shines, right? The ball python personality is typically pretty shy. You know, they get called pet rocks all the time and things like that. Here's the thing though, man. That shy pet rock is pretty great for a first time keeper, right? Because it's less likely to bite, it's less likely to do all these things. Hog nose are really, really unlikely to bite you. Uh, they may puff, they may make noise, they may even flip over, play dead, have their tongue hanging out and show their black belly off, which is a pretty neat trait and they'll, they'll musk when they do it and smell terrible. So they will play dead to have things not eat them, which is really cool. Uh, they got a cute little face with that tiny turned up shovel looking nose. So their personality is really, really good. I think their personality honestly is a winning one for uh, snakes, but it may not necessarily be for everybody, but their personality is one of the few that can truly compete with ball pythons, maybe even eclipse ball pythons just because I think they have a few more little cute tricks up their sleeve than the ball python does. However, oh, what's going to hold these guys back? Because, man, if this is a win, this, I would say, is good enough, right? Uh, this is different, but not worse. So why can't these just take over? Well, there's a big reason, man, and it comes down to this. This is a problem for these guys. Legality. You know... Um, legality is a huge issue with your hoggies and legality is why these guys will never, never take over for ball pythons. And it's stupid. This is where people who make laws are dumb. Uh, I shouldn't say they're all dumb. Some of them are dumb. There are people who make laws who are absolute fucking morons, y'all. Some of them are stupid. We elect dumb people, but not everybody we elect is dumb, but they get misinformed about these things. And when I talk about elected officials, remember, I'm not talking about just Congress or just your president. I'm talking about your city council members too and your county commissioners, people who pass the local laws that are going to affect you on a daily basis. They don't know about hog no snakes and they pass these cookie cutter ordinances that they don't understand. And one of the big things that you run into is when you run into a ban on all venomous, including rear fang. When you have that, well, that's where these things are fucked. And this is a very common thing in a lot of city ordinances and a lot of state ordinances even, uh, where it just says you can't own anything venomous, including rear fang. This is where I think listing that is, is so bad in, in the laws for legality. They should just list out the, the, the basic you know, groupings you can't have, like nothing from the family. Like if you really wanted to outlaw truly dangerous snakes from people keeping them, you, know, you could basically say, I don't want anything in the family that's you know, Lapidae or Viperdae. Done, right? Get rid of your Lapidus, get rid of your Vipers. We got most things covered. There's a few other ones you could lump in there. But when they say that all rear fanged, I mean, technically, you can't have a garter snake at that point because a garter snake is rear fanged venomous. It's not dangerous. Uh, you can't have a hog nose. A hog nose is pretty widely known to be rear fanged venomous. Look, you would have to let this snake chew on your pinky finger for about an hour to get a fang in you, and then it's going to be annoying. Okay, they're not dangerous at all. But that does not stop the fact that they still become illegal. Uh, and with that, then... The problem, and this is why we don't have them, is if we were producing them to take to shows and sell, a lot of shows will let you do that. Some shows may not. Uh, some cities may not. And you could run yourself sideways for, like if I sold them in the city of Manhattan, I'd be running myself sideways technically because they have the, including rear fanged. So does that mean I would never produce hog nose? No, I absolutely would. If I wanted to get into something different, this would probably be my next project, honestly. Uh, but I couldn't produce them in great numbers because it's just a difficulty in moving them from place to place with the stupid law about rear fang venomous. You know, rear fang, there's a handful of snakes that should be banned for most people or if you wanted to get rid of dangerous snakes. I can't argue with places who want to have a little more control on something like a boom slang because it's a rear fang venomous. But when you put a boom slang 
on the same planet as a hog nose, which is what laws like that do, uh, well, that's just dumb. It just is. It shows a complete lack of understanding in the animals that we're dealing with. Um, so, you know, you're never going to get those laws like over six feet. Never going to have a problem, right? Great there. You're never going to have that issue. You know, you're just going to run into this, that rear fang. That rear fang is going to be killer on a man. Um, and that's really a sad deal because otherwise this is a snake that I think could, could compete. You know, um, its biggest drawback other than that is only the 39 variants. But the truth of the matter is whenever you see these numbers like this, part of this is because ball pythons have been bred and worked so much and have become so popular, more and more things get found, right? So I would be willing to bet if hognose had that same moment in the sun, this number would likely go up quite a bit to kind of make up for that. But this is going to keep them out. It's going to keep them out, you know, which is a bummer because they're cute. They're cute as hell. They play dead. They're just, they're little bitty snakes. They're just kind of neat. You know, I mean, I look at these snakes in this size. I think, man, this is a great snake if you have kids. You know, they're kind of, they're not big or not scary. If somebody doesn't want a, a constrictor, is there a great snake for that too? You know, because they don't want that python name. They're a little worried about that. I think these should have their very own niche at least, but they just get kicked out because of the rear fang. And then you have to use the word uh, venomous. And that's this big, scary word that really shouldn't be scary depending on the situation. So this is why they don't have it. Curtin, anything you want to add about these guys? Um, how easy or what do they eat? So they're going to eat, I believe, and again, I've never kept them because of this issue here, but you're going to be able to feed these rodents. It's going to be smaller rodents. I mean, they're not going to be taking, yeah, like mice, they're not going to be taking full-size rats anytime soon, but you're going to feed them, you know, pretty much like that. I mean, there's, yeah, and there's other small snakes out there that, you know, we could talk about, like Kenyan sand boas, but, you know, they don't have the personality and they uh, honestly don't, aren't cute. These things are cute. I mean, a hog nose is that snake that, you know, when you put it on the table and the reptile girl sees it, she goes, oh, look how cute that little thing is. They're cute. They're a cute fucking snake, man. They're great. But it can't hurt you, yet it gets banned. So it's kind of pointless, right? Um, now, if you're in an area where everywhere you go doesn't have laws banning that and you want to go for it, man, knock yourself out. I think there's a market for that. You know, I think this size also uh, helps in the fact that um, you don't, you know, like if you're taking them to a show, you're, they're going to be little bitty guys, you know, so they're, they're great for that. You can deli cup them pretty easy and sell them. So I really do dig them, but just, yeah, that's the problem. Just, just that. Curtin, you want to add? No. All right. So, so far we've looked at hog nose and we've looked at uh, blood pythons or short tail pythons. I think both those snakes have a niche in there, uh, but I don't think either one of them could or ever will compete for top dog with the ball pythons. We've got a few more snakes we'll probably look at for this uh, as we go through, but those are the first two. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.